Hey friends you are watching a new chapter so don't forget subscribe this channel more update. At the beginning of the chapter, we see that after Cheng wins, a notification window appears on his screen. And inside it he gets a new skill, seeing which he is very happy and thinks, Great, these are all materials that I need. With this, I'm now one step closer to being able to create a new era weapon. I'm really looking forward to it. After Cheng wins so quickly, all the students sitting in the classroom become very surprised and start talking among themselves. Heavens, Cheng Kaimo actually shattered the record. 1 hour 56 minutes and 32 seconds. This new record took less than half the time of that of teacher Li Yang's. I predict that for the next 10 years, no, for the next 20 years, it'll be extremely hard for anyone else to beat this record. Then the moment shifts and we see all the teachers standing outside the portal from inside, which the change was entered. Then one of those teachers says with surprise, We're doomed. The ownership rights of the Black Fathom Deeps will have nothing to do with Fenghua College from now on, but rather it will belong exclusively to Cheng Kaimo. Hearing what the teacher said, even the principal standing there was surprised and said, The new record that was set gave us all the impression that it would be unbeatable. After we've spent these past few decades sitting in comfort with no ambitions, it has finally come back to get us and made us pay such a heavy price for it. While they are all talking amongst themselves, we see Cheng coming out of the portal and smilingly saying to the principal, Since I've taken down the Black Fathom, Deeps, it's time for you to honor your promise. After listening to Cheng's words, the principal tells him, Don't worry, our Fenghua College knows that if you agree to bet, you must accept to lose. So regarding the things you wanted, I can guarantee that you'll receive everything in a week. Hearing the principal's words, Cheng tells him, Great. Then as for your other three secret realms, would you like to make another bet with me? Hearing this from Cheng's mouth, all the teachers standing there get surprised and say to the principal, Principal, don't bet with him again. If you were to continue betting with him, our Fenghua College is going to be stripped down to its underpants. Principal Kang, think before you act. Hearing what they all said, the principal becomes very angry and shouts at them and says, What a bunch of fools. Do you think that even if I didn't continue betting, he would stop? According to the rules, no one can turn down a secret realm. Contest. After yelling at them, all the principal tells Chang, We'll bet, of course, we'll keep. Betting, if you're able to take down the remaining three secret realms, I'll give you double your requested materials. But there's an additional condition. Our Fenghua College must merge with Jiangcheng College. Then the moment shifts and we see an unknown person reading a newspaper and while reading the newspaper, he thinks, this Kang Yong is pretty crafty. The current Fenghua College has already lost all their secret realms, but he managed to take advantage of this situation and merged with Jiangcheng College in exchange for Fenghua College's survival. While Principal Zhang was thinking all this, suddenly someone has to open the gate and he says to Zhang in fear, This isn't good. That Zhang's Cheng Kaimo has come to our school. Seeing him so scared, Principal Zhang tells him, Teacher Wang, you're making such a fuss over nothing, settle down. The teacher becomes very surprised after listening to the principal and asks him, Principal, could it be that you already prepared for this? After listening to the teacher's words, Zhang stands. Near the window and looks outside and says to him, From his performance at Fenghua College, I admit that Cheng Kaimo has some skills in breaking the secret realm records at our school. Shouldn't be too much of an issue for him either, even though we can't decline his secret realm. Contest request. But first he'll have to be able to reach the secret realm hall. And yes friends if you want to see more of this chapter then subscribe to the channel. After some time, we see Cheng reaches Zhang College and a man is standing in front of him and he asks, So, you're Cheng Kaimo. My name is Zhang Yuxi. On level 22, my class is Jigong Master and I challenge you to a duel. Hearing him words, Cheng starts asking him smilingly. So you guys think that by using these underhanded tricks, you'll be able to stop my advance. Seeing both of them talking to each other, both the people standing there get very surprised and start talking among themselves. What's this? This teacher is challenging a student to a duel. Doesn't this go against the rules? I don't think. It does because since this teacher just said that his level was 22, as long as the level difference doesn't exceed 20, according to the rules, anyone can be forced into a duel. The student is screwed. But I wonder what kind of grave mistake he made to receive such a strict punishment. And on the other hand, all the teachers sitting in the meeting room are looking at both of them. Then one of them shouts and says to all of them, Everyone do an in-depth analysis, find out Chang. Kaimo's weakness, and on the other hand, teacher gets ready to attack Chang and tells him, Chang, Kaimo, don't blame me for the injuries you're about to receive. If you want to blame someone, then blame yourself for coveting the foundation of our Chang College. Saying this, the teacher starts moving forward to attack Chang and he attacks Chang with his kick, which Chang stops with one hand and makes a counter-attack due to which he falls very far. 
and Cheng also moves forward to attack him and attacks him with his knee in the stomach due to which he falls to the ground and blood starts coming out from his nose and mouth. After defeating him, Cheng stands there and sees someone coming from the front and seeing the teacher losing so quickly. All the students standing there get very surprised and start talking among themselves. Damn, isn't that Cheng Kaimo? He's now fought all the way to our school. Cheng Kaimo is awesome. Fighting someone four levels higher than him. Even teacher Zhang Yuxi is a match for him. Now, folks, level 24. Professor Zhu Liquin has arrived. This is going to be epic. Brace yourselves for another showdown. And on the other hand, another unknown person was coming towards Cheng. Seeing him, Cheng asks him, In order to prevent me from challenging the secret realm, don't you think it's a little too shameless for you guys to send people one after the other? Hearing Cheng's words, the unknown person smiles and starts saying to Cheng, Cheng Kaimo, don't think that you're invincible. Today we're going to keep challenging you one by one to tire you out until you are ultimately defeated. I don't believe that after fighting ten duels in a row, you'll still have the energy to go challenge secret realms. Hearing his words, Cheng tells him, in that case, I'll just finish this quickly. As soon as he hears Cheng's words, sweat appears on the face of the unknown person, and he becomes very scared. And in his next movement, Cheng activates his skill and takes Gan out and starts attacking. And within a few moments he too defeats, seeing him losing so quickly. All the teachers sitting in the meeting room become very surprised and start talking among themselves. This, what is this skill? How is teacher Zhu Liquin stunned in place? He has been forcefully stunned there. How can you even fight back in this situation? Cheng says, angrily after defeat him. Who's next? Hurry up and get over here, don't waste my time. After defeating... The unknown person, Cheng stands in the battlefield and all the teachers and principal come there. Then we see an evil smile on Cheng's face and his eyes turn red. And then he says to all of them, Since you're all here, then why don't you all line up and we can do this one by one. While Cheng is talking to all of them, suddenly another unknown person moves forward to attack. Cheng and says, What nonsense, I'm a level 27 berserker, let me test your skills. By the time, he comes near Cheng. Cheng starts attacking him with his gun and defeats him too. After losing, that too, Cheng says next. As soon as Cheng says this, three unknown persons move towards attacking. Cheng and say to Cheng, You arrogant kid, I can Chen Kai in level 32 and I'll teach you a lesson. Wang Helu am level 35 and I'll join too. Ji Yuan Hu am level 38. And after a few moments, we see all three of them lying on the ground and Cheng defeats them too. Seeing them all defeating, the principal gets very angry and starts thinking, Our school doesn't have any more teachers below. Level 38. So according to the rules, I can't block this kid anymore. But how can I resign myself to surrender the foundation of our school that we've held for the past hundred years? How about I just get rid of this kid here? What? I'm being watched. There's an expert protecting this kid from behind the scenes. If I were to make a move right now, I would be basically guaranteeing my own death. After thinking all this, he says to Cheng smilingly, I can't keep trying to prevent him from challenging the secret realms. Otherwise, I'm afraid that I won't even be able to keep my position as principal, since it's known that student Cheng's strength is unmatched. When the school's teachers heard about student Cheng's arrival, it seems that they were a bit too over-enthusiastic. Student Cheng Kinmo, this way please. At the beginning of the chapter, we see that Cheng was being discussed everywhere, and news about Cheng was coming in every newspaper. And on the other hand, a meeting was going on in Zhang City College. Inside the meeting principal Kang was telling everyone sitting there, I believe everyone has felt the rapid progress in our school's advancement in the recent days, and everything originated from the performance of student Chang Kaimo in the past two weeks. The reason for calling everyone here today is to discuss a certain matter. Our Zhang City College plans to confer student Chang Kaimo with the honorary president title. Who agrees and who disagrees? Since everyone has no objections, then when student Chang Kaimo returns, we will hold the ceremony. But where did this kid run off to again? After causing such a huge commotion, he vanished without a trace. On the other hand, Chang is fighting monsters in Apocalypse Continent, and with his sword, he defeats all the monsters standing there in front of him. After defeating the monster, a window notification appears in front of Chang that reads, Congratulations to the host for reaching level 20. The transformation system has been upgraded T to LV3. The current transformation slots is 46. All passive skills have been upgraded to LV3. Chang becomes very happy after seeing so many abilities and starts thinking. The passive Gatling gun not only increased 5% of its activation chance, but also increased the number of bullets by 5. That's at least a 50% increase in damage. And the invincibility period of the Ripple Slash is now 4 seconds. There will be numerous possibilities as to how I operate it from now on. After getting an overall upgrade to my passive skills, there's a huge increase to the damage I can deal. 
I have to consider things carefully for the last two transformation slots. I just plundered the top 20 schools in Jiang City and have collected all the materials I need. Let's forge the weapon that transcends the current era first. After thinking so much, Chang starts going inside a building. And after going inside that building, a person standing, there was doing something with a hammer. Then Chang says to that person, Can I learn forging and equipment manufacturing here? Hearing Chang's words, the man said to Chang without turning back, The learning fee is 50 gold coins. And the subcontract fee starts from 100 gold coins. If you have no money, then leave quickly, don't waste my time. Hearing his words, Chang becomes very surprised and says, Good fellow, isn't that too underhanded? Isn't the standard learning fee for forging 20 gold coins? Looking at how this old man is dressed, he doesn't seem like a man of greed. Could it be that all the money he earned is spent on upgrading his forging experience? Is he one of those forging experts that's obsessed with making equipment? Hearing Chang's words, the man gets a little angry and asks Chang, Too expensive for you, it's always been this price. Think about your own circumstances. Did you work hard on killing monsters and earning money all these years? Hearing the words of that unknown person, Chang starts leaving from there, and shows him a folded paper in his hand and says, Then forget about it. It's a pity I am embarrassingly short of money. I don't know when this exceptional blueprint in my hands will ever see the light of day. Hearing about that blueprint from Chang's mouth, the unknown person becomes very surprised and looks at the blueprint and thinks, This blueprint isn't simple. Thinking this, he starts stopping Chang and pleadingly asks him, Where? Where did you get this blueprint from? Quickly, let me take a look. After listening to him, Chang tells him, I will let you have a look. But regarding the learning fee for forging, then Chang gives him the blueprint. After taking the blueprint in his hand, the unknown person says to Chang, What fees the learning book is on the shelf on the right? Go read it yourself. Then Chang picks up the book and starts reading. And as soon as he reads the book, a window notification comes in which it is written. Congratulations, you have successfully learned basic forging. The current lowest grade you can forge is outstanding grade green. You need 10,000 points of forging exp to level up to intermediate forging. Please work hard. And on the other hand, that unknown person looks at the blueprint and thinks in his mind, whoever came up with this blueprint is an exceptional genius. I have been forging for more than 30 years and I can't understand it. Then we see Chang approaching the unknown person. And he starts taking the blueprint from him and says, This blueprint is something I edited from the collective work of numerous masters from my previous life. This is a weapon that can seamlessly connect into different forms. The exquisiteness of it is not something a normal person can understand. Since you don't understand it, I will go somewhere else. After listening to Chang's words, the unknown person joins hands front of Chang and says to him, Although I don't fully understand it, I do understand the principle behind it. Please allow me to participate in the manufacturing of this weapon. As for the subcontract fees and materials fees, I will provide it free of charge. Chang gets very surprised after hearing the words of that unknown person and tells him, But I only prepared one set of the main materials needed. If I fail, I will have to collect everything again. How about this? I have four other blueprints here. You will forge it for free and I can see how your skill is. After listening to Chang's words, the unknown person thinks for two hours. And after thinking for so long, he shows Chang all his objects and says, Come take a look. I forged them with my full effort, and used up quite a lot of my treasured materials. Then Chang takes off his gloves and looks at them with great surprise, and after some time we see Chang wears all the objects lying there and then thinks, I did not judge him wrong. This old man's forging ability is indeed not bad. These are all outstanding grade blueprints with an average level of 15, but he made them all into level 25 equipment with excellent grade. As soon as he thinks this, the status window opens in front of Chang. Seeing which Chang becomes very happy and thinks, My combat power increased by 3000 in the history of Xia country. I am afraid there aren't any students with a combat power of 16,000. Then we see an unknown person calling from outside and saying, Shang Lao, the materials that you need, I collected them all. You should be able to forge the weapon for me today. How did you become an advanced forging master? Did you pay money and go through a back door? There are people discussing forging skills in the living room. After making noise for so long, when no sound comes from inside, he goes inside and removes the curtain and looks and after removing the curtain and thinks, you can't even differentiate between loose tool forging and open die forging. Sorry, this is my first time hearing these two terms. He sees that some unknown person was treating Ding as if he was his master. Seeing this, he becomes very surprised and thinks, am I seeing things? A young man is actually reprimanding Ding Zhang Lao. Seeing this, Huang waved his hand and said, Zhang Lao, it's me Zhao Huang. I'm here. Then both of them see him and Chang gets very surprised to see him. Seeing Chang looking at him like this, Wang gets very surprised. Sweat starts appearing on his face and he thinks in his mind. Why is this young man looking at me with a strange expression? 
No, I remember the last time when an old homosexual tried to sleep with me. He also had such an expression. Looking at Huang, Chang thinks in his mind. Huang Tan. I didn't expect to run into a teammate from my previous life. Huang Tian, the number one sword soul god in the game Apocalypse. He was level 98. He is meticulous and calm, and his control over the battlefield and every opportunity were sublime. Moreover, he became world famous with his superb swordsmanship. Our friendship in my previous life started in the game, but developed in real life as well. In the end, we became good friends that could talk about everything. After all this, we see that after two hours, Chang makes a sword and gives it to Huang, seeing which Huang becomes very happy and says, as expected of Zhang Lao, to actually forge the level 24 excellent grade weapon cruel bar. Not that I am boasting, but not many people can beat me in forging in the entire Xia country. In the previous chapter, at the beginning of the chapter we see Chang holding the weapon in his hand and thinking about it. The base damage is actually 25% higher compared to my previous life. I suppose no one would expect a level 20 student to have a weapon with a base damage of 150. Then Cheng says smilingly change to gun form. As soon as Cheng says this, the weapon gets involved in gun confirmation, seeing which, the two people standing there get very surprised and one of them says, this really a weapon, that I took part in forging, it's such an exquisite design. You could even say it's an unparalleled masterpiece. Seeing that weapon and listening to the person standing next to him, Hunga also says, is, this the legendary silver weapon? It can freely change its form, that's too overpowered. After engaging in gun form, Cheng commands the weapon again and says, change to spear. Form, here's Cheng's command. The weapon gets activated in spare form which makes Cheng very happy. After this, a notification starts appearing on the screen which reads, congratulations. You have successfully bound bound your soul to the ranked silver weapon, flowing light, thousand bladed umbrella. A weapon that's bound to the soul will not be dropped upon death. Others will be unable to use it as well. The weapon is currently in an unsharpened state. All attributes will be e-reduced by 50% temporarily. To sharpen the weapon, you will need to soak it in the fresh blood of a boss-ranked creature. That's above level 25. All abilities will be unlocked after. Then the moment shifts and we see the location Razor Wetlands mid-ranked secret realm fix. Level 26. Level party recruiting. Level 27 warrior leader looking for a level 25 healer will lead the party with absolute efficiency. I am a level 22x baby looking for a party. I don't need any of the equipment drops. I only want x to raise to my level. And we see Chang also standing at that location and he thinks, 10 more minutes till the appointed time. I guess he's still the same as he was in my previous life. Always right on time. During so much, Chang opens his screen and starts changing something on it. And while changing, he thinks, it just so happens that I have to make some preparations. Before the battle, let's set up the remaining two transformation slots first. Let's transform the Void Sphere of an Elementalist first. Not bad. After transforming the Void Sphere into a passive skill, it does indeed have a huge improvement. If I use minor magic spells to activate the passive, during the 15 seconds cooldown, the Void Sphere, I can activate it at least 2 minus 3 times. That's quite a significant amount of damage. Next, for the second transformation slot, I want to leave it for a status skill. But I don't know if this system will be able to transform it successfully, so let's try. It first, after choosing Dazzle Mark, Cheng becomes very surprised and thinks the reason for choosing Dazzle Mark Dark Element is because it increases the damage of Dark Element skills. It will work well together with the Void Sphere, but I didn't expect that after the status skill was transformed into a passive skill. The time limit got completely removed, and the specific skill for activation is no longer needed in the future. If I were to transform all the different Elemental Dazzle Marks into passive skills, then when? I use a spear to attack, wouldn't be able to generate five different elemental dazzle marks. With a swing of my spear, that's too ridiculous. While Chang was doing all this, other people standing there started talking among themselves, and said, damn, even a level 20 is here to become an ex-baby? That's too lazy. Didn't you see his class? He is a national treasure, a vagrant. All of them are talking till Hunga comes there, and seeing him they all get very surprised, and say, look, Huang Tan is here. Wow, he is Wang Tan from Blue Wind College, one of the top 10 universities. So handsome. He is so young, and yet he is already at level 28. He is indeed the most talented sword soul in the country in the past 30 years. Why is he here at the Razor Wetlands? Is he here to set a record for the secret realm? Then we see Hunga smiling and saying to Cheng, Expert, let's go. Hearing Hunga's words, Cheng says to him laughingly, Just call me Lao Mo from now on. Saying this, both of them start moving towards the portal and the people standing there. Get very surprised to see both of them. And while talking among themselves they say, that vagrant actually knows Big Shot the Huang. 
Chan, moreover, if I didn't hear wrong, Big Shot Wang Tian actually called that guy an expert. What exactly is the origin of this vagrant? Razor Wetlands Located in the depths of the thorny jungle northwest of the novice region, Razor Wetlands Mid-Rank Secret Realm Level, 26. Razor Highlands Mid-Rank Secret Realm Level, 40. It's different from the college's secret realm. This kind of fixed-level secret realm can only be accessed by traveling through the field maps. The difficulty is higher as well. There's also a level 40 mid-rank secret realm besides the Razor Wetlands, known as the Razor Highlands. According to legends, the formation of these two secret realms are related to the ancient half-god Nijikamu. Nijikamu is an immortal giant wild boar that's wrapped with thorny vines. During a war between the gods, Nijikamu joined the righteous faction and killed the evil, burning legion. The battle between him and the Abyss leader Monos traverses across the entire continent of Apocalypse. Although he died in battle in the end, his fresh blood sprinkled upon the thorny jungle, nourishing the countless animals, plants, and even minerals. A group of quillbores slowly came to possess intelligence due to it and became believers of Nijikamu. They look forward to the rebirth of Nijikamu. That's why they have been protecting the thorny jungle for generations, thus forming the secret realms. Hunga tells Cheng after entering the portal. At the end of these two split paths, there's a mini-boss fetch mini-boss each. Later, you will stay behind me and kill the surviving monsters. You have to pay attention to your own safety. Hearing Hunga's words, Cheng smiles and tells him, Lao Huang, how about we have a competition? We will pick a path each. Let's see who can kill the boss and return here first. How about it? Hunga is very surprised to hear Cheng's words and asks him in surprise. Are you sure? You, a level 20 vagrant, want to compete in a speedrun with me, a level 28 sword soul? Aren't you afraid of the damage penalty between you and the level 26 monsters? Moreover, the monsters here are always at least in a team of four. Hearing his words, Cheng tells him smilingly, why you don't dare to compete. Hearing his words, Hunga puts his hand on his head and tells him, if you die later, don't blame it on me. While Hanga was saying all this, Cheng disappears from there. Seeing which Hanga gets confused and thinks, there's more monsters on the left path compared to the right. For his safety, I better go to the left. Then we see that Cheng was going in this direction and Hunga calls out to him from behind, says to him, Why are you stealing the path? I want to go. Hearing his words, Cheng moves forward. When Hunga see this happening, Hunga becomes very angry and thinks, I don't know whether you are a highly skilled person with courage or an ignorant person. Without worries, after walking some distance, four monsters appear in front of Hunga, seeing whom Hunga comes into fighting position and thinks of attacking them while moving. Ahead and smiling. Four of them appeared suddenly, can't be careless. Saying this, Hunga takes out his sword and starts attacking all four of them with his sword and continuously attacks them with his skill air combo slash due to which they get defeated in some time. After defeating them, Hunga says, It hasn't even been ten minutes. I am already at the one-third point of the journey. Can you really keep up with my speed? Hearing his words, Cheng tells him, Or maybe you are already dead. Hearing this, Cheng moves forward and there are many masters standing in front of him. Seeing which Cheng takes out his weapon and as soon as the weapon comes out, Cheng says, I will let you guys have a taste of the power of my new weapon. As soon as he says this, he transfers his weapon into gun form and after doing so, he starts attacking all the monsters standing in front of him with his gun, due to which, gradually all the monsters start killing and within some time he all masters lose. Cheng thinks smilingly after defeating all the monsters standing there. One round of firing uses more than 50 bullets with an average damage of 170. I didn't spend all my efforts of forging you in vain. This kind of damage can't be done without some kind of plugins. We saw in the last chapter, Wang takes out his sword and starts attacking all four of them with his sword and continuously attacks them with his skill air combo slash due to, which they get defeated in some time. After defeating them, Hunga says, It hasn't even been 10 minutes, I am already at the one third point of the journey. Can you really keep up with my speed? Hearing his words, Cheng tells him, or maybe you are already dead. Saying this, Cheng moves forward, and there are many monsters standing in front of him, seeing which Cheng takes out his weapon. And as soon as the weapon comes out, Cheng says, I will let you guys have a taste of the power of my new weapon. As soon as he says this, he transfers his weapon into gun form, and after doing so, he starts attacking all the monsters standing in front of him with his gun, due to which, gradually all the monsters start killing and within some time he all monster lose. Cheng thinks smilingly after defeating all the monsters standing there. One round of firing uses more than 50 bullets, with an average damage of 170. I didn't spend all my efforts of forging you in vain. This kind of damage can't be done without some kind of plugins. Let's start the video. At the beginning of the chapter, we see Huang attacking the monster with his rural phantom. Blade technique. Due to this one attack of Huang, the monster is completely destroyed and falls to the ground. 
After defeating the monster, Huang looks at his sword smiling and thinking. Today's performance was pretty good. I just set a new personal record in 27 minutes. Cruel Barb really boosted my- Momo is still struggling with those minor mobs. Seeing so much sweat comes on his face, and he thinks nervously. More likely, he's already respawned at the graveyard. Then the moment shifts, and we see a person sitting in the middle of the forest, and that person is none other than Cheng. Then Huang goes to him and asks him, Lao Mo, you're back already. Cheng starts smiling after listening to Huang's words. Seeing Cheng smile, Huang starts laughing nervously and tells him, no worries. Moving away is the smartest move at your level, no shame in that. Saying this, Huang starts leaving from there, and while leaving, shows his hand and says, to Cheng, stay put, I'll handle the path ahead. Saying this, Huang starts moving very fast from there towards the forest, and after walking some distance, he thinks in his mind, weird, why aren't there any monsters here? After walking some distance, he saw that someone had defeated a lot of monsters and gathered them at one place. Huang gets very surprised after seeing the sight and thinks, what's going on here? Why are there piles of elite Borman corpses? Thinking this, he starts moving forward very fast and thinks, this is the seventh pile. How can Lao Mo take down so many high-level monsters at once? Even I can't manage that. Could it be that this level 20 solo player is stronger than me? Is Agam supposed to be here? The level 27 elite Borman priest, even if he's dead, where's his body? While Huang was thinking all this, suddenly Cheng comes from behind and tells him, Look, up at the sky. Hearing Cheng's words, Huang looks up and becomes very surprised and thinks, How about that? Are you convinced now? Lao Mo followed the level 27 elite Borman priest Agam. Thinking this, he says to Cheng smilingly, Lao Mo, you've got my respect. You're way too strong. Tell me, how did you do it? Cheng becomes very happy after hearing Huang's words and tells him, it's not that hard. You could do it too, as long as you are using the skill. Did you catch all that just now? Huang starts writing Cheng's words in a book. Then from there Cheng starts leaving. Seeing him leaving, Huang says to him smilingly, let's go, let's continue with the challenges. Ahead. The development plan for the future number one soul sword officially begins. The moment shifts and we see Huang fighting the monsters and he attacks all the monsters. One by one. Then suddenly a monster comes after him. Sheng attacks the monster who comes behind Huang with his gun. Seeing that attack, Huang gets very shocked and thinks, Your timing just now was off by. Zoink two seconds. While Huang was thinking, suddenly two monsters move forward to attack him. Then he separates them from the middle with his sword and thinks, Watching Lao Mo's skills and action made me realize the full extent of our difference. It's all encompassing. What's even more astonishing is that Lao Mo seems to be intimately familiar with all my combat habits. It's as if he knows me better than my own mom. After separating those two monsters from the middle, suddenly another monster comes behind him and then Huang gets scared and thinks, Damn it, we've not finished the skill cooldown yet. While Huang was thinking this, the monster attacks him, due to which he flies into the air and falls very far. Seeing Huang falling like this, Cheng tells him smilingly, Oh my is this, the most promising, soul sword got across the Xia country in the last 30 years. Are you trying to kill me with laughter? Hearing Cheng's words, Huang tells him, Lao Mo, your standards are ridiculously high. After all that talk, you expect me to defeat the overlord Mutasi and his minions without a scratch. Do you think everyone's as freakish as you? Hearing his words, Cheng tells him, Do you know why you couldn't even dodge Mutasi's basic attacks earlier? As a warrior, your instincts often overlook minor damages from your surroundings. Thinking you've found the perfect moment, you blindly go for quick attacks. And that's what really messes up your attack rhythm. True timing is about accuracy, not speed. Often striking later can give you the upper hand. Once you understand that, you'll be able to use everything I've taught you. Not bad, you have some intuition? That's the Huang Tian I know. Do you want to become the Tanky Continent's number one soul sword god? Follow me, and you'll surely become the Tanky Continent's greatest soul sword god. Wang becomes very happy after hearing Cheng's words and shakes his hand and says, All right, Lao Mo, I believe in you. And as soon as he does this, he starts moving rapidly towards the monster and says, I will become the Tanky Continent's number one soul sword god. How could I give up in such a minor scenario? Saying this, he attacks the monster with his sword, and the monster also attacks him, and, due to Huang's attack, the monster flies in the air and then Huang thinks, an opening. When the enemy is preparing to attack, changing my position will alter its attack accordingly. I must wait for the enemy's preparation to end before dodging. No, just another zing two seconds. While Huang was thinking all this, the monsters attack him, but Huang dodges the attack and says, now, saying this, he attacks all three monsters simultaneously with his sword, and after attacking, he thinks while smiling, is this what walking on a tightrope feels like? 
This method of combat where every move needs to be premeditated, can it really be this exhilarating? Huang is fighting the monster, and Cheng standing behind is smiling at him and thinking. The strongest tanky soul sword is finally awakening. Then we see that after defeating all the monsters, Huang goes to Cheng and tells him, Lao Mo, you're truly incredible with your teaching skills. You could at least be a great director at our Blue Sky Academy. Hearing his words, Cheng said to him as he passed by, if you can grasp even half of the combat techniques I've taught today, my efforts won't be in vain. Here's the last lesson for today. Then the moment shifts, and we see, Karl Jerstabrisk, the great shaman of the Borman tribe, has four skills, a two-second purification, and the instant heal and mana spear. They are all auxiliary skills. Seeing the monster, Cheng starts smiling and says, your final lesson is to try and interrupt all his non-damaging skills. Leave all the damage dealing to me. You just focus on the interruptions. The fight won't last long, so no need to feel pressured. Saying this, Cheng attacks the monster and starts moving towards it rapidly and says, today your blood will serve to sharpen my weapon. So at the beginning of the chapter, we see Chang moving forward to attack the monster with his weapon and thinking. Karlger Stibrisk possesses an extraordinary ability to heal. I can't just rely on ranged attacks to defeat it. And as soon as he thinks this, he starts attacking the monster due to which the monster starts screaming in pain. And in the next moment, we see the marks of wounds on the monster's stomach and blood starts coming out from it. Seeing him shouting like this, Chang starts smiling and thinks. Indeed, the war spear form is the optimal choice at this moment. Not only does it minimize attack penalties, it also stacks the shadow dazzle mark. Due to Chang's attack, the monster becomes very angry, and a green aura starts appearing around the monster. Then the monster shouts and says, Despicable humans, I will annihilate you all on behalf of the great Nijikamu. I saw the monster so angry Chang says to Huang. It's your turn, Lao Huang. After Chang says this, Huang takes out his weapon and moves forward very fast to attack the monster. And the next moment he attacks. Looking at his attack, Huang says smilingly, Haha, gotcha. The monster begins to heal whatever damage it took from Huang's attack. Seeing this, Huang becomes very confused and points his finger at the monster and says, What the heck? He can cast continuously. That's just unfair. Chang tells him after listening to his words, Stay focused, Dante. Miss the next chance. And after saying this, Chang starts attacking the monster again. And the next moment, Huang also starts attacking the monster with his sword. Then Huang attacks with his skill ghost slash. Immediately after the attack, the monster starts healing itself again. Seeing which Huang says, Here we go again. He's starting that annoying casting again. But my ghost slash skill is still in cooldown. And after saying this, he starts moving towards attacking the master again and says, I have no choice but to use that move. And as soon as he says this, he makes a strong attack on the monster. Seeing Huang's attack, Chang also comes into the attacking position and says, Well done, you're finally getting it. Next, I'll perform a disappearing health bar trick. And after saying this, Chang attacks the monster. And immediately after Chang's attack, the monster falls on the ground and shouts, No, I can't die. I must wait for the great Nijikamu to descend upon the earth again. Huang says, smiling immediately after defeating the monster nice. You dealt over a thousand damage in one hit. Lao Mo, you're amazing. I can assure you Lao Mo, because of you, the vagrant profession will have countless followers, just like always. After every sharp move I make, Lao Huang never skimps on the praise. After listening to his words, Chang thinks in his mind, if I could manage to rally my old comrades in the near future, I can imagine us once again dominating the continent of Changui, ascending to the very pinnacle of glory. What a marvelous dream that would be. Then the moment shifts, and we see Huang pointing a finger at a hut and saying to Chang, Lao Mo, take a look at the tent and the thorny passage below. That's the final, final challenge. It is home to a hundred elite Bormen. Our only task is to rescue the goblin trapped in the tent and safely escort him to the end of the passage. Then we'll have truly concurred this level. We've only spent two hours and three minutes so far. All we need to do is proceed with caution step by step. I'm sure we'll break the record. 
After listening to his words, Chang tells him, Lao Huang, are you up for a thrilling challenge? Huang asks him, smiling as he hears the thrill coming from Chang's mouth. How thrilling. And before Huang could say anything further, Chang gave him a strong kick and told him, super thrilling, Lao Go. And the next moment, a scene is seen inside the hut where the monster has imprisoned a green goblin. And the next moment, Huang is flying in the air and moving towards that hut. And the next moment, he is on top of the monster, goes and falls very fast, and immediately after falling, says that hurts, the goblin says, looking at the Huang, kind human. Have you come to rescue me? I offer you my heist. Before the goblin could say anything further, Huang held it in his hand and started running very fast. And behind Huang, many monsters also started chasing him. Then Huang said, running away. Less talking, more running. Lao Mo, this is way too thrilling. Are you trying to kill me? Upon hearing his words, Chang attacks him with the ice wall the very next moment. And immediately after the attack, he tells Huang, Lao Huang, keep the goblin safe. I'll handle the thwarting and dealing of damage. After listening to Chang's words, Huang tells him, Lao Mo, you're insane. How could you make such a commotion? Are you planning to face a hundred elite Bormen alone? Fine, I guess today I'm risking my life for you, nobleman. Saying this, Huang starts running away from there. And the next moment, we see Chang surrounded by many masters, seeing which Chang is smiling and thinking. Done now. All the elite Bormen warriors are gathered together. When thinking this, Chang starts switching his weapon to machine gun and as soon as the weapon is switched, he starts attacking all those monsters with cannon fire. Both Goblin and Huang are surprised to see Chang's attack. Then Huang tells Chang, Could it be? You are not here to save me. With so many Bormen warriors, how am I supposed to get out? Hearing his words, Chang said smilingly, Watch closely. I'll perform the Black Sphere stewing Bormen trick. Saying this, Chang switches his weapon again, and... Immediately after switching he gets ready to attack the monsters, and in the next moment, he attacks all of them with a big green ball. Huang contemplates Chang's attack in his mind. Is this Lao Mo's trump card? The damage is explosive, but the void sphere only lasts 4 seconds with a cooldown of a whole 15 seconds. Once the void sphere dissipates, the Bormen warriors will surely scatter. What will you do then? While Huang was thinking all this, Chang starts attacking the masters with his second move, seeing which Huang gets surprised and tells Chang, Big bro, time's running short. Unleash your big moves now. Saw Huang shouting like this. Chang tells him, Don't rush. Even the magic bullet has its clever uses. Saying this, Chang attacks the masters with magic bullet. Huang gets very surprised after seeing Chang's attack and thinks in his mind, is this a miracle? Where did these two new void spheres come from? He thinks to himself, smiling at his attack. Void sphere skill has a long cooldown and high mana cost. Usually, a normal class can only cast it once without mana potions. But once activated passively, the mana cost of void sphere becomes zero, allowing multiple castings. It perfectly compensates for my large-scale AO damage shortcoming. Thinking this, Chang said to Huang with a smile, Lao Huang, follow me, and you too will create many miracles. Immediately after Chang says this, a notification comes which reads, Congratulations to Chang Kainmo and Huang Tian for setting a new record in Razor Wetlands, finishing in 2 hours and 14 minutes. The team's average level is 24 currently ranked first. Let's start the video. At the beginning of the chapter we see that after defeating the monster a notification shows up which reads, Congratulations to Cheng Kainmo and Huang Tian for setting a new record in the Razor Wetlands, completing it in just 2 hours and 14 minutes. Their team's average level is 24, now ranked number 1 after defeating the monster so quickly. Chang and Huang become number 1 in the ladder board, seeing which the people standing there are very surprised and while talking among themselves they say, Damn. That's awesome, they finished in just over two hours. This new record beats the second place team, Zhao Yufei's, by a whole 37 minutes. Huang Chan is a legend. He's setting records even while carrying a newbie. 
Then we see that Huang has a new skill in his hand, seeing which he becomes very happy and immediately after that he asks Chen. Lamo, I just scored a rare shoulder guard, item level 35, from a golden treasure chest. What did you get? After saying this, Wang is very surprised after seeing Cheng's skill in his hands, and tells him, Dan, a second advancement item, and it comes with phantom form, this thing is off. The charts. If you auction this, it could fetch up to 50 million blue star coins. Mao you've hit the jackpot. Then suddenly we see the green goblin says to both of them, kind humans, thank you for rescuing me from those dreadful wild boar men. I've accidentally uncovered a secret connection between them and the undead scourge. I've recorded everything in a secret letter. It's buried at coordinates 38,226,922. I hope you can help me complete this mission. Thanks again. I need to head home to recover now. Saying this and giving them a letter, the green goblin disappears. By the time Cheng was reading the letter, his facial expression had changed a lot and then Huang asked him sarcastically, could this be one of those legendary hidden quests? How come I've never stumbled upon it before? Hearing his words, Cheng tells him, of course, this hidden quest triggers only if you escort the goblin to the dungeon exit within 10 minutes. A standard approach would never meet this condition. This quest points to the Razor Highlands, but our current level isn't sufficient. Let's challenge it together after our second awakening. Wong is very happy to hear Cheng's words and tells him smilingly, All right, I'll speed up my leveling. Then Lao Mo, let's head out. While Huang was saying all this, Cheng puts his hand on his shoulder and smiles and says, Don't rush, I've got a place to show you. Then the moment shifts and we see that both of them reach the place where Cheng was talking about. And suddenly there is a huge explosion and the one who made the explosion is none other than Huang. After some time due to the explosion, a huge crater is formed in the cave. Then Huang was surprised and said, There really is something behind this wall. Lao Mo, how did you know? Saying this, he goes inside the cave and as soon as he goes inside the cave, he gets very scared and sweat starts appearing on his face. Then he says, this is an altar. I've only seen pictures in textbooks before. It's said that an altar allows Awakeners to learn a skill from another class covertly. I never imagined such a precious resource would appear in a level 26 dungeon. Hearing his words, Cheng tells him, the location recorded on that map is right here. He he, actually, it's because I've already memorized the location of the altar. Wong becomes very happy after hearing Cheng's words and says, Lao Mo, you have such valuable information and you're willing to share it with me. Lao Mo, I love you. Seeing his such actions, Cheng tells him, Stop acting like a drama queen. Just activate the altar and see what skill you can learn. Then Huang touches both his hands on the altar and as soon as he touches, his skill rage burst starts showing. Then he says, I learned the berserker's rage burst. For a sword soul, it's like adding wings to a tiger. As soon as he says this, he jumps down from there and comes to the ground and says, Go ahead, Lao Mo. I'm even more excited to see what skill you'll learn. Hearing his words, Cheng says, Logically, a level 26 altar should only teach first advancement. Skills? What other skill could it possibly let me steal? Saying this, he goes near the altar and places his hand on it. Then suddenly he becomes very surprised and thinks, so that's how it is. As soon as he thinks this, a notification appears which reads, Because you're a spellbinder, you've already mastered all the first advancement skills. You may choose to learn one of the second advancement skills from any class. Currently available skills include, Death Tombstone, Mountain Splitting Slash, Quantum Explosion, and Annihilation Black Hole. After reading the notification he thinks in his mind, considering the current forms available to my Flowing Light Thousand Bladed Umbrella. I should opt for a ranged damage skill. I choose the Berserker's Quantum Explosion. This finally covers the shortcoming of super long range damage. Now my fire power has no blind spots. Then the moment shifts and we see Cheng again going to Zhang and looking at Cheng. Zhang says to him, Young friend, what brings you here? I didn't expect you two to be so formidable. You even hit a new record in the Razor Wetlands. As soon as he says this, Cheng tells him, Elder Zhang, I'll need to borrow your anvil and furnace for a few days. I want to rush to intermediate level forging before my entrance exam. As soon as he hears about the exam from Cheng's mouth, Cheng becomes very surprised and says, Entrance exam, you're still just a third year academy student. No, this isn't right. There are still four days until the entrance exam. Aren't you going back to prepare? With your talent for cultivation, you must not let blacksmithing delay your exam. Moreover, upgrading to an intermediate blacksmith requires 10,000 XP points. Not to mention 4 days, much less even 40 days might not be enough. Hearing his words, Cheng smiles and gives him the bloodstone saying, Don't worry, I know what I'm doing. Seeing the bloodstones, Cheng becomes very surprised and says, These are Nijikamu's bloodstones. That must be at least 50 units. Even clearing the razor wetlands a hundred times might not 
yield this much. Then Cheng says smilingly, I have my methods. Although Nijikamu's bloodstones have an extremely low drop rate, a combo attack reaching 100 will trigger a bug that ensures a drop. This is why I used only the Void Sphere in the final challenge. Hearing his words, Zhang shows him the bloodstone and says, Using Nijikamu's bloodstones for forging can triple the forging experience. With so many bloodstones, you might really be able to create a miracle. Then we see that after some time it becomes night and Zhang shows him a sword and tells him, Are you reincarnated? From a hammer or something? The first piece of equipment crafted was a success and even broke through the limits of superior. Oh god, how is your material loss so minimal? What's the principle? Here, can you teach me? Three days later, Cheng has a book in his hand and a notification shows. On the screen which reads, Congratulations, you've successfully learned intermediate forging. You can now craft items of at least rare quality. Zhang is very surprised to see Cheng learning everything so quickly and says, You are a monster. In just three days, not only did you earn 10,000 forging experience from scratch, you even used 50 units of Nijikamu's bloodstones to craft 46 finished products. A newbie's first forging attempt achieving a 92% success rate. Although my own forging talent is enough to rank among the top on the Changi continent compared to you, it's simply not worth mentioning. After learning everything and listening to his words, Cheng starts leaving from there and says while leaving, Elder Zhang, I'll leave these pieces of equipment here for consignment. As for the price, just sell them as you see fit. I trust your judgment. Once I pass the entrance exam, I'll come back to find you. At the beginning of the chapter, we see Liu saying to Cheng outside the exam center, You little rascal, you finally decided to show up. I thought you were going to skip the entrance exam altogether. Then suddenly Cheng asks him, Mr. Liu, what's all this fuss about? After listening to Cheng's words, Liu tells him, you'll see soon enough. But before that, let me go over some details about the entrance exam. The exam will be held at Hanwu City Central Gymnasium, attended by over 400,000 students. Cheng gets confused after hearing his words and asks, why do we have to go somewhere else? For the exam, seeing Cheng so confused, Liu tells him, Zhang City is just a small prefecture-level city. Among the 32 cities in Ebei province, it's not qualified to host the exam site. This time, the exam's dungeon is called Namurgen, level 20. With a total of four bosses, you must defeat at least two to pass. The exam dungeon has been specially modified by Blue Star scientists. There are no penalties for death, but everyone only gets one chance. Today's exam results will directly determine your future potential. Speaking of which, you've played a major role in making Zhang City Academy as strong as it is today, kid. So I've planned a little surprise for you. When he hears the surprised words from Liu's mouth, Cheng becomes more confused and asks, What surprise? After Cheng says this, Liu opens the gate, and then Cheng sees that all the students and the principal of the university are standing there and seeing Cheng. They start saying, Look, it's Senior Cheng Kaimo. Senior, you are our eternal pride. Give it your all tomorrow. Hehe, <laughs> I want to try being a vagrant next year too. Right, we'll strive to follow in your footsteps. Then we see Principal Liu announce, Dear students, today is the day all third-year students from Zhang City Academy marched to the entrance exam. But before that, I have a major announcement. After discussions at the highest levels of the new Zhang City Academy, we've unanimously decided to award Cheng Kaimo the title of honorary president. After hearing these words from the principal, all the students start saying, we fully support the academy's decision. Without Cheng Kaimo, there would be no new Zhang City. Cheng becomes very confused by this announcement and thinks, honorary president, how can the organization decide to make me a mere third-year student. The honorary president. Thinking this much, Cheng feels a little relaxed and suddenly announces, All right, as long. As Zhang City Academy stands by me, I will never let it down. As soon as Cheng says this, Principal Liu tells him, By the way, the admission spot. You gave up. The academy has decided to give it to Luo Jingji. Then we suddenly see Jingming say to Cheng, Classmate Cheng may ask you which top 10 colleges you are applying to. As soon as Jingjing says this, Cheng's friend comes to him and tells him, Lao Mo, Liu Jingjing, is too shy to say it directly, so let me rephrase it to you. She's into you and wants to attend the same college. Then Cheng says while holding his friend's ear, You brat, you've successfully transitioned into a paladin. Have you thoroughly read the entrance exam manual I left? Hearing Cheng's words, his friend tells him, I read it, I've already studied it thoroughly. Seeing Cheng and Jingjing together, all the students sitting there started saying, Liuo Jingjing's beauty and Cheng Kaimo's strength, they're a perfect match. Right, right, we should keep the talent within our academy. Get together, get together. After all this, Cheng tells Jingjing, classmate Liuo, as soon as he says this, Cheng becomes silent and takes out the phone from his pocket and talks on the phone and says, Hello, I 
I'm Chang Kaimo, may know who you are. As soon as Chang says this, the unknown caller says to Chang, I'm Wu Zhongle, the standing committee member of Tanhai City Management Association. Let's meet. Then the moment shifts and we see entrance exam day. Ebay Province Capital, Hanwu City. Entrance exam venue. All the students and Chang are also sitting inside the bus. Then Chang's friend tells him, Lao Mo, Liu Jingjing is such an outstanding girl. Why won't you accept her? It's such a waste. Chang ignores his words and thinks to himself, I didn't expect the Ding Hong incident would. Involve Zhang Hongxin, the executive vice president of Maling University. The person Wu Zhongle mentioned who would protect me is probably that mysterious elder. We met that day. If it weren't for him, I'd probably be dead and buried by now. Damn it. Seeing so many vehicles, people standing outside the exam center say, What's going on? Why did Zhang City Academy bring so many cars? Suddenly seeing all this happening, all the students sitting in the car start saying to each other, Bro, what's happening? Why did the entire academy's upper echelon step down there? It seems our academy didn't have enough parking spaces and accidentally took up the spaces of Hanwu Affiliated Academy. Damn, Hanwu Affiliated Academy. Isn't that our province's top academy? Then the unknown person says, Enough noise. You from Jiang City Academy didn't report your numbers on time and blatantly occupy others' parking spaces. Everyone move your cars outside. Then President Guo and Han say, Don't you know the allocation of parking spaces? And all other services at the exam venue are based on academy rankings. Exactly. How dare a mere countryside academy make trouble here? While both of them are talking about all this, suddenly Wu comes and says, Everyone seems so energetic this early in the morning. Suddenly seeing Wu there, the president gets a little nervous and says to Wu, Mr. Wu, what brings you here? Please wait a moment. I'll arrange for the entire association's upper echelon to meet you. Hearing the president's words, Wu tells him, there's no need for that. I'm here just for a personal matter. There's no need to follow official protocol. Having said this, Wu goes to Principal Liu and tells him, you must be Commissioner Liu. From the Education Commission, right. May I know which student is Cheng Jianmo? Seeing this happening, both the presidents become very confused and think, what's going on? A standing committee member actually came all the way to see a student. Zhang City Academy is just a mid-tier academy. How did they manage to form connections with someone as influential as Wu Zhongle? Director Han, as you can see, will give this parking space to Zhang City Academy. Just then we see Wu meets Chang and tells him, indeed, truly a hero from the youth good. Very good. Saying this, Wu gives a box to Chang and tells him, this is an apology from Maling University. Please accept it. Seeing this happening, the principal and all the teachers standing with him get very surprised. And then the principal says, what on earth did Chang Jianmo do to make Maling University? The national top 10 university apologized to him. After taking that box, Cheng says to Wu, Mr. Wu, please convey my thanks to Vice President Zhang for the gift. Hearing Cheng's words, Wu said smilingly, to accept a gift and still make a sarcastic comment, you really are something, kid. All right, I'll pass on your message. Seeing all this happening, Principal Liu thanks, and to thank you even know Mr. Wu. Today our Zhang the Academy has once again benefited from your help. You just how many more surprises do you have for me? Then the moment shifts and we see exam monitoring center and all the people sitting there talk among themselves and say, Did you hear? Hanwu Affiliated Academy just got slapped in the face by Zhang City Academy. We have a feud now. This year's entrance exam is going to be interesting to watch. Stop chatting. All the candidates have passed the testing device. Look, the top 1000 potential rankings are out. Then the moment shifts and the exam starts and we see that all the students in Chang also starts teleporting. And while teleporting, Cheng thinks, today's exam results will directly determine my future potential. This time, I won't hold back. I will show everyone my true strength. Only by doing so can I gain enough status in the future. I hope I don't encounter another incident like the one at Mauling University. Without that mysterious old man's help, relying on myself alone, I might have fallen into deep trouble. So I must become stronger. It's time to initiate the primary dungeon baptism. Luckily, I've refreshed all the primary buffs in Jiang City, giving me plenty of choices. Omarwigan, formerly known as the City of Miracles, the Congregation of Paramount Technology. It's now contaminated with radiation, leaving behind mutated monsters and machines that are out of control. Exam candidates have been sent to Marwigan's entrance of the underground. Exam begins. After the exam starts, we see Ching at the location where he has to complete his first mission. Then Ching looks down, and there are many monster rats below, which are growling at Ching. Seeing them, Ching thinks in his mind. At the end of this ring-shaped flight of steps will be the no-one boss. 
The stairway is filled with mutated rats that are the size of a wolf. According to the standard process, I should be clearing monsters as I go down the steps. But I don't have to waste my time doing that. While Ching thought all this, the rat moved forward to attack Ching. Thinking this, Ching activates the weapon. System. Activate hiding of equipment appearance. As soon as he does this, Ching jumps down from there, and then he gets a little confused. Seeing the monster standing in front of him, and the next moment he says smilingly, We meet again, my old friend. The monster becomes angry after seeing Ching and hearing Ching's words. Hearing this, Ching starts switching his weapon to gun and says, This viscous fallout is slightly stronger than the ones outside. Not only is he two levels higher, his HP is also higher by 500. However, things are different now. With my current level and attributes, I have an additional 50% AI against you. As soon as he says this, Ching starts attacking him due to which the monster's HP starts decreasing. And after immediately defeating the monster, Ching tells him, To deal with you, one round of strafe is enough. And on the other hand, seeing all this, all the teachers sitting in the hall become very surprised and start saying to each other, You all should have gotten an evaluation of their potential. However, it's just for reference. The real decisive factor for their entrance exam is still their performance in the secret realm. At this point in time, for the ring-shaped flight of steps, the students should have cleared a quarter. Am I seeing things? That Ching Kaimo has already killed the viscous fallout. It's real. It's only been two minutes since we started. I really want to know how he did it. It's a pity we can't watch a replay. His performance in the second stage, we need to pay attention to it. While they are talking about all this, Ching moves on to his next task, and there is a bomb. Monster standing in front of him. As soon as Ching reaches the bomb master, they all start talking among themselves again, and say, Isn't this Ching Kainmo a bit too arrogant? To actually rush directly into a group of bomb bots. This bomb bot isn't a normal mob. Its bomb hurl is an indiscriminate owl attack. He wouldn't be able to take it on more than twice, even if he's level 20. It seems that even a student with a potential evaluation of SSS isn't anything much. He's just a reckless man. All the teachers are watching Ching on the screen, and Ching starts dodging the bomb monsters. Attack. Seeing which all the teachers become even more surprised and say, What kind of movement skill is that? It's such a narrow passage, and he actually didn't get hit by a single bomb hurl. Such foresight is inconceivable. This is an evildoer with a potential evaluation of SSS. Hold on. It's almost the end of the passageway. Whereas boss no to. Is he crazy? He's pulling more than a 100 bomb bots behind him. Wouldn't he be attacked from both the front and back? Ching Kaimo, how exactly are you planning to deal with this? And on the other hand, Ching starts leaving from there dodging the attacks of bomb master. And immediately after leaving from there, we see there is a huge spider web. And after some time, a spider monster is also seen there. Ching is very happy to see. And after seeing the spider monster, Ching suddenly jumps on it, and the next moment Ching goes over it, and from the other side, the bomb master starts attacking with bombs. Then Ching takes out his weapon. After taking out the weapon, Ching activates his skill and drops his clone on the spider. Master and jumps from there, and the next moment the bombs start attacking the spider. Monster and on the other side, Ching starts attacking the bomb monsters, and soon after, we see the overload attack reach a hundred, and they all explode. Seeing all this happening, all the teachers sitting in the hall become very surprised, and start saying among themselves, he actually only used two insignificant skills and caused the boss and more than a hundred. Mobs to end in mutual destruction. Genius. An absolute genius. This old man has been teaching his entire life, and I have never seen a student with such fighting talent. It's been a 100 years 
An astonishing talent has finally appeared. There's hope for the Zia country to rise up. The heavens blessed our Zia country. I suggest changing the main screen to the first-person view of Chang Kaimo. Kin did. The screen in front of us is so small. What's the point of watching it? Agreed. We need to carefully study the control of student Chiang Kaimo. We need a bigger screen. That's right. If someone wants to watch their own students, then please use the small screen in front of you. Damn it. The leading role today should belong to our Han Wu subsidiary college. Now it got stolen by some unknown student. But you are now under the scrutiny of hundreds of people. Your mistakes will be caught if you are not careful. I would like to see if you can continue to not make mistakes under the close watch of all the teachers here. After defeating the bomb monster, Chang moves towards his third task. As he approaches, he sees something strange and thinks, This is Marwigan's trump card slaughter machine. According to the past year's usual practice, you will definitely be able to enter the top. Ten universities if you defeat it. The reason why it's known as the gatekeeper of the top ten universities is due to its abnormal. Duff skillaging halo. Aging halo, a periodic duff, discharged every five seconds. Increase physical damage taken by 5% to enemies within a 50-meter radius. This means, in just one minute, challengers will be taking 60% more physical damage, greatly. Increasing the chance of sudden death. Thinking this, Jiang takes out his weapon and turns it into a sword and starts moving. Forward to attack and attacks the monster with his sword. After attacking with the sword, Chang goes after the monster with a slide tackle. And after going behind the monster, Chang holds the monster with both his hands and attacks the monster with a suplex. Seeing Chang doing this, all the teachers sitting in the hall get very surprised and start talking among themselves. What's going on with this kid to actually use suplex against such a heavy unit? Seems like he doesn't even have any basic knowledge. To think that actually thought he was some kind of genius. He's really extremely foolish. Something's not right. Look at the state of his body. He's actually not affected by the aging halo. Damn, it's true. Why is the physical damage duff not taking effect? How is that possible? He used the zero one second of Ifrain from Suplex. So friends chapter ends here. Now what will happen next? We will know in the next chapter. And don't forget to give number out of 50 to the chapter, and we will meet in another video. Till then, goodbye. Now what will happen next? You can tell your opinion by commenting. And don't forget to subscribe the channel and like the video too.